you identify yourself as gay. Why do you then choose, because it is a choice, why do you then choose to be a Muslim when it says explicitly within Islam, within Judeo-Christian tradition, mm -hmm. that that is prohibited? It's a choice. <laughs> I would just like to say that sexual orientation is not a choice. It's not a choice at all. It's a choice for you to be Muslim. But why so why would you? No, no, no! Don't get involved in this. Why would you choose to be a Muslim? Why would you choose to be a Muslim? That, that is prohibited. It's a choice at the end of the day. You can choose to be a Muslim or you can choose not to be. It doesn't say in the Quran that it's prohibited. What is prohibited no, is the act. Surat is the act. Surat is the act. I can give you the ayah that it says I, it in. I am not here to talk about that one what act. What I am here to talk about. Let, let, let Asif speak, talk, please? please. Let Asif speak. Let him, let him respond to your question. I am not here to talk about that one act. What I'm here to talk about is love. Love between two men, two women. Asked, when and will it be OK and accepted to be gay in Islam? That is not... It's a loaded question, but I'm sorry. You either be gay or you be Muslim. No one is forcing you, you see, to be I a Muslim. Think that's no I think that is totally wrong. Yeah. Okay. yeah, lady here in the blue. I think that is totally wrong. I mean, I, I was brought up in an Islamic household. I'm from an Islamic community. I'm from a very conservative Pakistani community. If my mum and dad can accept me, why can't the wider community accept me from my yeah. Just lady in the blue, and then we come to the gym. Um, I personally think that the question you're asking is when will the Muslim community accept you as a, um, a gay person, accept gay or homosexuality? The thing is, um, homosexuality is not accepted in Islam, so the Muslim community will never accept homosexuality in a whole. But you being gay, on, not on a judgmental level, you can be gay, but then at the same time, if you choose to follow a religion which prohibits um, homosexuality, then you can't turn around and ask when will they accept for you to be gay. Can I just say then... Yeah. Can I just say, what are people like me meant to do then? You know, gay teenagers, the suicide rate is going up, homophobic crime is going unreported, and it's because of attitudes like this that, that is causing people like me such dilemma. The danger with literalism is in insisting that there is only one interpretation and one way of doing things. Mm. If we take that literally, if we take literalism literally, then only 200 years ago, slavery was accepted and justified by religion. <laughs> Let me finish. The Quran explicitly and literally, let me finish and make this point. The Quran literally allows for slavery, as does the Bible, but we no longer practice it because our attitudes and interpretations have changed. There is no one Muslim community, there is no one way of interpreting things. If he wants to identify as being Muslim, as this gentleman here said, Abdullah, he said he's not going to tell him he's not a Muslim, and I applauded him for that. He said he's not going to discriminate against him, you just did. And so even he disagrees with you. Yes, you did. We're going to bring good Tim in here. God does not exclude anyone. That is a crucial first point. And everyone has the right to define for themselves what their identity is. And we all have identities which quite often are contradictory. We all have to find some way of navigating that, of remaining faithful to our vision of God while also remaining faithful to who we are. But to add to that also, the rest of society, in particular the state, should not try to impose its view or its morality upon Islam. This is a conversation that has to happen within Islam. That's and there what's might happening be room, here. There might that's be room, here there, and, and that's what it, there might be room for growth and change. Ultimately, you decide for yourself. But the idea of saying to someone, you're a sinner, even if you do define them as a sinner, you cannot be part of this religion. That to me is anti-God, because that's a decision that God makes, not you. Not you. As to what you said about interpretation, you're pushing the idea that there is no true interpretation of Islam. By that exact logic, you're saying that the people, the extremists, right, are, are their, their interpretation of religion is also valid. There is mainstream Islam, there are things that are universally accepted within Islam. For example, the gentleman brought up the idea of, of, of drinking, of doing drugs, you know, those things are prohibited within Islam. I can choose not to do them, or I can. But for me to go out and say, I'm a Muslim and I drink and that should be accepted, that's it's not religion. Not religion. That's yeah, not you what you're to do to. You're, you're conflating. You're conflating choice and how somebody is without choice. That first of all, he was born the way he is, and I'm sure he can speak for himself. What I would like to say to you is, many, many Muslims 
would consider you sinful for not covering your face and would insist that you're sinful and you can't be a Muslim for showing your face and not wearing the jilbab, the long gown. So at the end of the day, this is all interpreted. And just as you've got the right, in fact, they'd also... Please, let me, let me respond to you, please. No, because you're going into all sorts of No, 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 I'm talking about interpretation. Can I just finish my point? Go ahead, go ahead. They would also say that you shouldn't be speaking in front of men, you shouldn't be on television. Oh, come on. There are literalists who argue that too. We know that because they're in power. Let's just go back to Abdullah quickly, everyone, everyone. Okay, okay. Um, Osama bin Laden was asked, right, he was asked, uh, why, why do you go against the Islamic prohibitions of killing women and children? And he says, ah, oh, the law's not set in stone. He has a, he's a modernist. Osama bin Laden is a reinterpretationist, modernist. He doesn't believe, he believes in different interpretations of Islam. You can reinterpret it. I am, he, it's the same mentality that Maj Nawaz has to reinterpret scripture when it suits him. In Islam, we believe he's, he's in rules, we believe in principles. Okay. You can't he's just change those things. You can't yeah. just change those things when it okay. suits you.